Slowly the hijab should be coming into her life so that by the age of nine, hijab is part and parcel of her social life. If I come to my daughter, for eight years I've taught her nothing about hijab. Then I come at the age of nine and I straight away come to say, you've got to wear this piece of cloth. She'll straight away rebel. Because whenever you compel someone to do something, they'll rebel. Whereas when you explain with the idea and the philosophy of hijab, that person will understand. And that's why as an advice, sometimes the parents have to come with a scarf, maybe buy your children scarves. Whenever your child wants a scarf, buy. Even when they don't want a scarf, stick about 3,000 in the house. Just let them have the idea. Because it is a piece of important equipment for them. It is a piece of identity for them. And that's why us as parents, Every single one of us needs to understand how we explain the concept of hijab. Not only within the religion of Islam, but to those outside the religion of Islam. Because many Muslims today don't know which verses to come out with about the concept of hijab. They will come and explain to you, well, you know, we have to wear this hijab, it's a piece of cloth. It gives us respect, although I don't know which verses speak about it. I may have heard a couple which discuss it. When we discuss hijab, there are two angles. The first angle is to reply to feminist opinions in universities today, number one. Number two, it's for me to look at the verses in the Qur'an, which show me hijab on three levels. A social level, a spiritual level, and a physical level. There are three levels of hijab within the Qur'an. First, let us reply to certain feminist scholars. Amongst them, Fatima Marnisi, very famous Moroccan feminist scholar, who attacks the religion of Islam and says the Lord of Islam hates women. The Lord of Islam has no interest in women. She says although Muhammad tried to help women, he had companions like Umar ibn al-Khattab who hated women. This is her words. She had companions like Umar ibn al-Khattab who were known to hate women, who were known to be women beaters. And she says therefore Islam is a religion which oppresses the female. In her opinion, the, the concept of hijab comes from five different angles which have got nothing to do with religion. Please understand these angles, brothers and sisters, in order that you are able to reply whenever someone gives you. She believes hijab is not within the religion of Islam. She says there are five opinions. Number one, a philosophical opinion. Number two, a social opinion. Number three, an economic opinion. Number four, an ethical opinion. And number five, she gives a psychological opinion. Five different opinions about how hijab came about. The first opinion is philosophical. She claims that the Muslims bought hijab because of the idea of asceticism. Asceticism is when you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the idea in certain Western opinions is that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by secluding yourself away from the world. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Philosophical opinions with the idea of asceticism. What does she claim? She says in Islam and throughout history, you will find that people have always found women as the root of all evil. And the idea was that women do not bring us towards purity. On the contrary, women make you just think about pleasure and desires. So what she stated was, when you look at the history of the Indians, for example, which she claims Islam took from the Indians and from the Iranians and formed a religion which Muhammad came about with, she says, look at the Indians. Either they were having much intercourse, which made them hate women, or when they were having intercourse with women, what happened was they then became, an idea became within them that too many rulers are stealing our women, so the best thing we're going to do is cover them. This was one opinion. She said another opinion is that someone like Paul, he is part of those who brought in the concept of hijab. Because you know Paul, he used to believe that headlights are the pearls of God. Imagine that. Headlights, this is a Christian belief, that Paul used to say in order for you to become closer to God, you've got to separate yourself from women because women are evil. The best way is to make sure don't go near these women and that woman shouldn't be very clean so that man is not affected by them. So Paul came out with the idea that head lies are the pearls of God. And the idea then came forward that in Islam, the hijab was put on in order that man would cover his wife and therefore would be aesthetic and would not think about sexual pleasure. Uthman ibn Mad'un was one of the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And indeed he was a companion of Rasulullah as well. One day his wife comes to Rasulullah. She says, Ya Rasulullah, this Uthman, my husband, all that he does is fast in the day and pray in the night. 
He doesn't do nothing else but that. Ya Rasulullah, is this what Islam has come to preach? With the attack on asceticism, Rasulullah replies by putting his cloak down. He puts the whole cloak down, he leaves the house, and he seeks to get to Uthman ibn Mad'un. When he gets to Uthman ibn Mad'un, he says to him, Uthman, I have not come to introduce celibacy and monasticism. This is not in my religion. On the contrary, if you think you are going to get closer to God by fasting the whole day and praying the whole night, this will not bring you closer to God. I like to look after my wives, you should seek to look after your wife as well, number one. Number two, we find an instance within the hadith that there was a case when three people came to Rasulullah, three wives, they came to Rasulullah, one of them said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband doesn't perfume himself. Another one came, she said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband doesn't eat any meat. And a third one came to Rasulullah, she said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband doesn't engage in any sexual pleasure with me. Is this what Islam came with? Again, Rasulullah goes to each one of these husbands and explains to them that to reach Allah, we do not look at the female as being something which obstructs us. On the contrary, whatever is done within limits and within the confounds of Sharia can lead you towards Allah. You being away from woman or you becoming a priest who never engages with anyone and reaching a stage where the priesthood went into pedophilia and the priesthood went into sleeping with choir boys, this has got nothing to do with Islam. On the contrary, Islam came forward with the idea that a person can reach Allah without any idea that he has to be celibate. Number one, first opinion philosophical. A second opinion emerged, which was a social opinion. They said Islam... It bought hijab because of male insecurity in Arabia. Arabians, they said, were very insecure about their woman. And the only way they could protect their woman was by doing what? Was by coming forward and covering them so no one can see them. And what happens is there are many instances like this that I wouldn't doubt. That in history there were rulers who because of the amount of women they used to take, certain people would have to hide their wives. Mursal al-Mutahari mentions an example in one of his books where he says amongst the greatest Iranian emperors and Shirovan, he mentions him as what? He says that one day there was a general within his army and that this general was away. So this leader, this king, this emperor, he went to see that general's wife because the general's wife was beautiful. When the person came back, his wife told him that the emperor came and he was right next to me. He was sleeping right next to me. Straight away, he told her to leave. When he told her to leave, what happened was the emperor came to his general. He said to him, I heard you gave away your garden. To which the general replied, because I saw a lion's footprints in my garden. The idea being that the insecurity you have made as rulers jumping on our woman has made us hide them. Whereas on the contrary, Islam came at a period where women were also found in being in many secure situations as well. Yes, they used to bury the female alive. But as well as that, they used to always consider the rights of the female and some of the most aristocratic females, such as Um Habiba, daughter of Abu Sufyan, who was from the aristocratic background, came into a background of security, came into an area of security and wanted to wear hijab. Number two. Number three, they say economic reason. They say Islam came forward with the idea that the person, the, the scholar says there are four periods in economic history. There is the communal period when people had no economic movement. Then there was the period in history where men dominated over women. And then there was the period where women rebelled. And then there was the period of equality. They say Islam as a religion came in the period where males were dominating females. Therefore, Islam used the hijab for economic reasons where a male would come and dominate a female. Whereas we find that Islam came to give rights to the female instead of dominate them. Surah Al-Mujadala was revealed about a female who needed help. Which religion gives you a chapter, Surah 58 in the Quran, which is devoted because a lady, her husband would not engage in intercourse with her. And in those days in Arabia, what would happen was, if the husband didn't have intercourse from you, he could just leave you without divorcing. This lady, she put a plea to Allah and his Prophet. A whole Surah was revealed, honoring and answering her plea to say that Islam has not come to dominate the female, rather Islam has come to give rights to the female. Number three. Number four, ethical reasons. They give the idea that Islam put a hijab on a female because of male jealousy with each other. They say many males were jealous with each other. Muhammad being amongst them, he was jealous with others about his wife. So what Islam did, it said, let's stick a hijab on our wives so that no one can come and see them. 
Whereas what we find is that Islam doesn't actually preach jealousy. It preaches jealousy. 